The penguin loves to swear. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to that channel, hit that subscribe button. We talk penguin, Batman, and so much more all the time here, and I love talking about it. And a special shout out to all of our new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been so much fun talking about the penguin with you all for the last eight or nine or ten or whatever weeks it's been. It's been it's just been a, like a wild ride, and I've had so much fun discussing it with theories and reviewing and all the fun stuff of the Penguin. But we're not done yet. The Batman 2 is on its way. And there's so many questions surrounding it. Who's going to be the villain? And my biggest question is, should it be rated R? The Penguin on HBO was a hard R. We got swearing. We got blood. We got stabbing. We got uh, cigar smoking. And we know that when the Batman was coming out, Colin Farrell wanted Penguin to smoke a cigar. And Warner Brothers was like, I don't think so, pal. You're not going to do that. Not on our watch. I didn't totally disagree with Warner Brothers' decision. We live in a new era now where smoking is kind of passe, right? Nobody wants to smoke. There was a time, I remember in the 90s when I was a kid going to the theater, I remember going to see Get Shorty, one of my favorite movies ever made. And everybody smoked in that movie and obviously Tarantino movies and all these movies. People smoked like crazy in the 90s. Like smoking was the coolest thing you could do in the 90s. But that's all come and gone now. And it's almost like when people smoke, it's kind of like gross and people put their nose up to them. That's not something you do. So I, on the one hand, obviously Oz, Oswald, Cobblepot, Oz Cobb should smoke, especially a cigar. But on the other hand, you don't want to promote it. You don't want to show it. I totally get it. It's a Batman movie at the end of the day. Now, of course, what we got as a Batman movie wasn't something I think a lot of kids would necessarily really want to gravitate to and watch necessarily. But it is Batman, and I totally understood that decision. Also, if you haven't checked out Holy Christmas Batman from my friend Brian Royer, link in the description below. It is a jolly good time. Also, if you entered the contest to win the Art of the Batman, I'll tell you that I'll announce the winner at the end of this video. So with all of that out of the way, I started thinking, should the Batman 2 be rated R? The Penguin worked rated R. And now is it going to be awkward for us to watch a, uh, watch a show, a series for eight weeks, eight hours of a series where we have the Penguin swearing like a sailor, we have blood splattering all over the place, and we have cigars and cigarettes being smoked, sometimes in multiple. And you start to think about it and how well it worked on HBO and that could translate into a movie. I mean, look, obviously Deadpool and Wolverine was rated R, but Batman and that, they don't, they shouldn't coexist. They're very different movies. And I think the, the R rating of Deadpool doesn't necessarily lend itself to what an R rating of Batman would be. So you have to look at it. Blade? Blade was a little bit more similar to the Batman, but it's still... You know, dealing with vampires are a little bit more out there than the Batman. The Batman is definitely a grounded superhero movie. Have we had much like it? Then you start to think of a movie like Logan. And Logan was rated R. And a lot of people credit it being so well made based on the R rating, right? Because they were free to do pretty much anything they wanted to do. So they were given the opportunity. They were afforded the opportunity to do that because of the R rating. They weren't held back by a PG or PG-13. They got to do what they wanted to do. So you start to look at those comparisons. You say, okay... Maybe it could work as an R-rated movie. Maybe that's the path we want to go down. Do an R-rated Batman. You can have. Do we need Batman swearing? We got that from Zack Snyder, right? We had Zack Snyder's Batman swear. And make no mistake, I will f kill you. Do we need Batman swearing? No. I would argue no. I think it could be realistic, but it could also be hokey. I have one problem. There are movies, I won't mention them, but there are movies when people swear and sometimes you're like, oh, you're just swearing to swear. Comedians are the same way. They swear and you're like, the punchline was just you swearing. Like, it's the shock value. And so for me, I don't need Batman to swear at all. Blood, do I need blood in it? I think, you know, sometimes when you watch a movie and there is no blood and there should be, you kind of question, like, well, that's not realistic. So maybe the blood stuff you can get away with. I think the Batman, though, the violence one night in the first Batman, I think it was pretty well done, keeping it the PG-13 that it was. Like, it didn't need to go hard R with that. I think the mayor scene at the beginning was brutal, and it was a horror movie scene, and, you know, it wasn't gushing with blood and swearing and all that, but it was still very effective. So I think there are ways to push the envelope on what you're doing in the rating that you're working within without having to go as far as that hard R. That being said, like I said, we just got the penguin with the hard R. So is it going to be weird going from the penguin saying <laughs> to the penguin saying frick and freck and frudge and all that stuff when we get to the movie? I don't know if we're going to get him saying any of that stuff in the movie, and I don't think he'll need to. Because one of the key aspects of all of it is the Penguin series was the perspective of the penguin. The Batman movie is going to be from the perspective of 
Batman. It's not going to be focused on Penguin. Penguin might swear all the time when he's off camera, but on camera in those moments, maybe he won't swear. And if they write it in a way where you don't even notice it, I don't think we will. I don't think we'll be like, oh, Oz would have said the F word there. If you write it well, I think we'll be able to, we won't notice those things very much. So for me, I don't think you necessarily need to make the Batman 2 R-rated for it to even feel like it connects with the Penguin. I thought the Penguin obviously connected with the Batman, and the Batman wasn't R-rated. Maybe it's easier to go to one direction than the other. I will say in the very first episode, when after he kills Alberto, I thought when he goes, oh, f-, and then it cuts away. I was like, oh, that they're not going to swear. And then he just... <laughs> He just went off the rails on the rest of the series. And I loved it. I really loved it. And I think, you know, when you look at it from the perspective of the villain, I think being a hard R and swearing and all that really, really works. But when you're from the perspective of the hero and you're looking at it through the lens of the hero, I I think maybe then you kind of like you settle down and you don't necessarily have to make it. Now, obviously, again, I said with Logan, Deadpool, like those are heroes, obviously. But I think it's just a little bit different with Batman. And you've already established the first movie is PG-13. Could you do it again? And I'm trying to think of my mind where they, they've had instances where movies gone from PG to R. Well, you have Alien uh, versus Predator, then the second Alien versus Predator, that went PG-13 to R. And Suicide Squad was PG-13, and I think Harley Quinn and The Suicide Squad were both uh, R rating. So th- it's not unprecedented necessarily, but it's not common either, right? Because you want the same fan base to go to go in and watch it. So I wouldn't have a problem if they made the second one rated R because because most of the reason, though, is also because we're getting the James Gunn Brave and the Bold Batman movie, which is going to be probably PG, maybe tops max PG-13. So that's going to be more of a family-friendly kind of Batman, I think, like a more fantastical version of the character where this is more grounded. And because of that, because you have that coming, you could probably get away with making this one rated R and going a little bit deeper and a little bit darker. And again, if you use the Logan pitch, I think it could work. I think Logan worked, obviously, and I think Batman could, but I don't know if you need to go down that because they did so well pushing the envelope of PG-13 with the first Batman movie that I don't even know if they need to go that far in R. And sometimes you can go too far, right? You can feel too free, and you might go a little bit too far. But I think because we're at the the perspective of Batman in this one, and because we're at the perspective of Penguin in this one, I don't see the need for it to be rated R. So I don't think they're going to go that way. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong (laughs) and they're going for a hard R. What do you guys think? Should the Batman 2 be rated R to coincide with what we got with the Penguin? Because the Penguin was fantastic. It was just so fantastic. How can you say, how can you argue, James? You're so dumb. It should be rated R. I don't. I think you you could do a Batman movie PG-13 once again. And I think it could be solid. And you can bring in villains who could be spun off into their own R-rated series. And now we'll pick the winner of... The Art of the Batman book. Thank you for everybody who participated in it. It was a lot of fun. We'll do more going down the road as well. I picked the winner's name out of a hat. And the winner is Hector Ora. Hector Ora, congratulations. I'll send you my email address. You email me. Give me your address and we'll mail out the copy of The Art of the Batman to you. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody who participated in it. It was a lot of fun seeing everybody. Burt Ward, of course, was the answer of the 60s Batman He was my Robin growing up. Chris O'Donnell was a great Robin, too. I don't care what anybody says. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And your thoughts on an R-rated Batman in the comments down below. We'll see you next time. May the force of others be with you. But I'd be glad to take your order. I am a little hungry. Of course, Robin.